Uh, let's talk some more about Obama's war on whistleblowers. He's come down hard on, on a huge range of whistleblowers. What's your take on that? Why do you think he's doing that? The Bush DOJ kind of set up a bunch of cases that all started to, to come due and, and be processed as Obama hit the presidency. So that it's not necessarily Obama personally that's doing this. It's not necessarily Eric Holder. It's, it, I think of it more as a continuum. I mean, there there is literally so little difference between the Bush presidency and the Obama presidency other than, than surface uh, differences. As it stands, Obama has initiated more prosecutions of whistleblowers under the 1917 Espionage Act than all other presidents in the history of the United States combined. And that's a pretty startling fact for someone who came in touting how he was going to have an open presidency and transparent government and it was going to be a revolutionary hope and change, yay. But it shouldn't be surprising. It really shouldn't be at this point in history, uh, especially, I mean, decades and decades after we had one president that said to the CIA, I'm going to break you into a thousand pieces and scatter you to the wind. And he ended up getting the back of his head blown off in uh, broad daylight in Dallas in 1963. So I don't really concentrate on Obama per se in terms of this whistlebl war on whistleblowing. But I think that this is just one more sign of the growing national security state. There's a sec national security state that almost operates as a second government. It's, it's a shadow government that, uh, that people don't even know exists, let alone think to protest against. So when these whistleblowers come out, like a Snowden or, or take your pick, these people are, are, can potentially really change the, the, the system by at least letting people know what's going on. It's from Renier Jose, who says, uh, do the whistleblowers actually achieve anything? Yeah, it's a good question. It's a fair question because uh, it's really hard to think of whistleblowers who have who have really managed to achieve fundamental change in, in the system. And uh, it's because the deck is so completely stacked against them that even when they do avoid prosecution, um, that it's still very difficult for them to get their case heard. Um, I work with a, a whistleblower, an FBI whistleblower called Sibel Edmonds at uh, BoilingFrogsPost.com. For people who don't know about Sibel Edmonds, I really hope they'll go and check out uh, her story. It's an absolutely remarkable story. But the long and short of it is she was working in the FBI uh, translation department uh, just after 9-11. They were hiring people to, uh, to deal with the backlog of translation in foreign languages, especially Middle Eastern languages at that time. And she basically uh, started to encounter a, 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 an espionage ring that was working in the Washington field office of the FBI that was trying to recruit her. Um, it was related to Turkish nationals. Um, she has this incredible story about nuclear espionage that was going on, uh, stealing nuclear secrets, um, information that relates to 9-11, uh, the fact that the, uh, the high-ranking U.S. officials were meeting with Ayman al-Zawahiri, Osama bin Laden's number two man, all through the 90s, um, right up till 9-11. They were meeting and openly conspiring with, with uh, al-Qaeda to, to work in uh, the Northern Caucasus region, which is a, a fascinating area that doesn't get a lot of attention except for the Boston bombing case, etc. But, but anyway, so she has this remarkable story and she went through um, one of the, the first, I think one of the first volleys in this modern day war on whistleblowers. She had the uh, state secrets privilege invoked on her, which is this draconian law that had hardly ever been used in the history of the United States before her. It's now become, unfortunately, much more common to, to deploy against whistleblowers. But basically, it stops the, uh, those whistleblowers from having a First Amendment right uh, to uh, free speech. All sorts of information about herself was classified that she could not say it, it, that she would have gone to jail. Um, where she was born, what languages she speaks, um, or how old she is, things like this. Which, the funny thing is, if she got pulled over on the side of the road for speeding, and the cop asked to see her driver's license, would she be able to give it to him? Because all of that info, <laughs> or some of that information would be on there, and that's classified uh, secrets, right? Um, so even some of the things that she had said to Congress, uh, testified to Congress, was retroactively classified. So congressional testimony that was on the record was made classified after she had given it. Um, just a remarkable, remarkable case. And she went through this big, long process, going through all the whistleblower channels, going through the, uh, the judicial system, um, and uh, eventually trying to, to uh, go through the media to try to get some attention. And basically, after this decade-long struggle, um, she's now pretty much completely on her own, doing it all through her own website. She had to self-publish her own book because no publisher would take it because they wanted to get official clearance from the FBI before they would publish anything from her. And all of this rigmarole that basically, if you have fundamentally damaging information, it's not going to get through that way. So one of the things Snowden said that I 
I agree with is that he said this is going to, every time that a whistleblower steps forward, it's going to be more difficult to do so. And and this was something that Snowden was thinking about when he was thinking, uh, you know, how to how to physically do it, you know, go to Hong Kong and meet with the journalists and and how to release the information and all of this. It's it's very very difficult to do these days when these whistleblowers are basically left high and dry and people just watch it as if it's entertainment. Ooh, where will Snowden end up next or something like that? If that's the uh, the attitude of the general public, then yeah, the whistleblower by himself isn't going to be able to accomplish anything.